Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So, Int Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is going to be dropping on the global side of the game in about 12 hours from now. So in today's video, I want to give you guys all the information you need from what his animations look like, to what his banner looks like, what he actually does, uh, his new category, or I guess it's not new anymore, but his main category, and all that stuff, to help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned dragon stones to summon for him. Now, of course, the goal by the end of this video is that you guys will have enough information to decide for yourself if this guy's worth it and if his banner is worth it. But I will still give my personal recommendation about what I think people should do. All right, now with all that said, let's just jump right into it. And before we talk about his details, let's actually pop over to the uh, official Doke on Twitter page and take a look at his animations and also the uh, new Nova Shenron's animations as well. So here we go. Gonna turn up the volume just a little bit and enjoy. Okay, so yeah, his animations, I mean, what can I say? They are top tier, absolutely top tier. Um, I am a little bit conflicted though, cause like that was the first time I heard his voice line in English, right? And is it me or does the quality sound like super, super low? Like maybe it's just the video, maybe they screwed up the audio somehow, but it just doesn't sound that clean to me. Okay, hold on, let me... Let me try this one more time. Yeah, I remember the Japanese voice line sounding a lot better. But I guess that's always the case, right? But it's not just like the quality of the voice acting, it's like the quality of the audio is kind of off. I don't know. Either way, his animations are amazing, and if the uh, English voice line bothers you, then just switch it to Japanese and you'll be fine, right? And uh, Nova Shenron looks good too. I mean, he's there, and he's actually a decent unit, or a pretty good unit, but let's be honest, we're mainly here for Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. So yeah, I love all the animations, man. I love the counter. I love his OST. I mean, you guys saw me, man. As soon as it started, I was like, yes, easily top five OSTs in the game right now. I mean, I think the Gogeta one's still better, the blue Gogeta. I think probably the two new LROSTs for MUI Goku and SSB Vegeta are better too, but that's probably it, man. I think this is the fourth best OST in the game. I mean, it's not that important, but it does make a difference. So yeah, those are the animations. If you guys like to summon for units solely based on the quality of their animations, then this guy's off to a really good start, right? Now let's pop over to his banner. Oh, by the way, the exact release date for this guy's banner is going to be uh, February 1st, 2021 at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So like I said, about 12 hours away, but obviously that depends on when you're watching this video. Like if you're watching this tomorrow, then it's already here. By the way, guys, as always, I will be doing a live stream as soon as the banner drops. So make sure to tune in if you guys are going to be free. Okay, so from there, his banner. Now... This is the thing that a lot of people take issue with. I think most can agree that Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta himself is a monster, but his banner is not the greatest, okay? It's it's not the best banner. Now, it's not awful, it's not trash, it's just a lower tier Dokkan Festival banner, I would say. I mean, we got Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta himself, and his presence alone on this banner 
it's gonna be enough for most people to summon, right? And then we have the new Nova Shenron as the side unit, STR Kefla, she's amazing, but I do think she's most likely gonna get replaced. We'll talk about that in a second. We got Fizz Piccolo, who, I mean, he's a very good tank. His ability to see super attacks, his tanking ability, um, still makes him a good unit for sure. And then we have the LR Gobros. Now, if they hadn't been featured so much recently, I think people would still be very excited about their inclusion. But the fact that they've been featured at least like two or three times over the past couple of months has made them a little bit less valuable, I think, in the eyes of a lot of people. But with that said, I mean, this unit is still absolutely fantastic. You know, like they still hit super, super hard, can get a good amount of defense, um, active skill, good leader skills, all that stuff. So if you guys don't have the GoBros, then this banner's gonna be much more valuable for you. Now, full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku, or super full power Saiyan 4 Goku, is um, a bit of a letdown. Now, let's be honest. I mean, when he first came out, people were super excited because he was the first full power Super Saiyan 4. And since he came out, actually, we haven't received another one. But anyways, um, yeah, this unit is just not that impressive, at least to me. You know, like his damage is good. I'm not saying like he's a bad unit, but his defense is quite lacking. And I don't think his damage is high enough to make up for his lack of defense, you know? So yeah, you know, I don't think a lot of people are too high on this guy. And I have no doubt in my mind that once the SDR Super Saiyan 4 Goku gets his Doken Awakening, or rather his uh, Extreme Z Awakening, he's gonna be much, much better than the full power one. Although you can run them on the same team, so there's that. But uh, aside from full power Super Saiyan 4, we got Fizz Omega Shenron, and Tech Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Now, obviously, it makes sense for them to be here, but these guys are super, super old, man. I mean, they are literally the first category leads in the game all the way back during the 200 million download celebration. Now we're technically on 350 million, going towards 400 million, right? I mean, they did change the naming convention, so now it's the worldwide celebration, but if you follow the trend, it would have been 350 last year and then 400 this year. Anyways, um, they're super old, right? So I don't think a lot of people really need them anymore. That being said, they're still decent units. I mean, at worst, they're okay. At best, they're still good units, I would say. So for anybody that doesn't have Tech Super Saiyan 4 and Fizz Omega Shenron, they're not bad units to have at all. It's just most people have them rainbowed at this point because they're so old and they've been featured so many times, right? But one good thing about them being old, being the first, you know, category leads, is that once we get through the 120 lead EZAs, right? Like for Fizz Cooler, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, the Super Saiyan 4s, so on and so forth, these guys will be the first category leads in line to get their Extreme Z Awakenings, right? So even though they're like not nearly as impressive as they used to be, those EZAs could make them very much top tier units once again. So that's also something else to keep in mind. Now, of course, that's probably not gonna happen for at least I would say six to nine months, but it's on the horizon. So yeah, overall, in terms of a rating I would give this banner, I think it deserves like a 6.5 out of 10. Of course, not a great rating, but not a terrible rating either. I still think that summoning on this banner is a better idea than summoning on pretty much every single legendary summon banner that has ever existed, you know? And uh, in terms of Kefla's replacement, the reason I'm saying she's probably gonna get replaced is because she was featured on the um, Fizz Frieza banner, right? Very recently. So I think she'll probably get swapped out for AGL Bardock. It's been a while since we've seen him featured on the global side. Uh, when was the last time he was featured, actually? All right, so he was on the STR Vegito banner during the Worldwide Celebration, and that was like five months ago. I mean, he was also on the Halloween banner, but I don't really count that. So in terms of like featured on a normal banner, it's been a while. So yeah, I'm gonna say that Kefla will be replaced by AGL Bardock. And honestly, I think the two units are fairly comparable. In fact, Bardock might be a little bit better. So if she's replaced by Bardock, 
then to some people at least, that's gonna increase the value of the banner overall, right? But like I said, man, it's definitely not a great banner and I understand the criticism. It's just that we've seen better Dokkan Festival banners recently, right? Especially coming off the Fizz Golden Frieza banner. I mean, that banner was really, really good. And this one in comparison, is a little bit lacking. So there you go guys, the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta banner. Not terrible, but not awesome. Now moving on to the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta himself. Let's talk about his details. His leader skill is Giant Ape Power, category key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 170%, or Shadow Dragon Saga, category key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 150%. Now Giant Ape Power at the time when he first released on JP, was a brand new category. But of course, since then, we did get the Super Saiyan 4 Broly from the Heroes Banner, who is a 130% leader, right? So while Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is better in almost every single way, if you have Super Saiyan 4 Broly, then this guy is not absolutely necessary to have to run the Giant 8 Power category. Now, uh, speaking of the category, let's actually take a quick look at the units. Obviously, the category consists of characters with the power of giant apes. Pretty self-explanatory. The two main leaders we have are the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Super Saiyan 4 Broly. And then we also have two subleads, the uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gohan and also the free-to-play giant ape GT Vegeta. Aside from that, it's a fairly limited category. So you're not going to have too many choices in terms of team building but you can actually put together a very strong and really fun team with this category alone. I mean, you got Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta as the leader, and then you throw in the LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku, and LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. If you have uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, definitely include him. Super Saiyan 4 Broly, obviously. And then for the last unit, you could throw in Super Saiyan 3 Goku for some support, or Wrathful Broly, um, Cumber, or whatever you have, right? I mean, personally, I'm really excited to run a legit giant eight power team under Gogeta's leader skill. And no matter what you wanna say about the category, at the very least, it makes sense, right? And that's not something you can say about all the categories in this game. So yeah, that is the giant ape power category. And of course, Gogeta is the best overall leader. So going back to his other details now, his super attack is Big Bang Kamehameha, which greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage. And his passive is attack and defense plus 200%, key plus 4, plus an additional attack and defense plus 40%, and attacks effective against all types for 8 turns from start of turn. And then high chance of attacks being effective against all types starting from the 9th turn from start of battle. High chance of evading enemy super attacks and countering with tremendous Power. So essentially, 200% attack and defense is unconditional, and then he gets key plus 4 and attack and defense plus 40% for the first 8 turns, and then after 8 turns, he loses this, but he still keeps a high chance of attacks being effective against all types. His active skill is plus energy emission, which gives him attack and defense plus 40%, and all enemies attack and defense minus 40% for 1 turn can be activated after the character receives attacks four times in battle, once only. Its links are Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, Shocking Speed, Orbit in a Flash, GT, Fused Fighter, and Fierce Battle, and categories are Fusion, Shadow Dragon Saga, Kamehameha, Final Trump Card, and Giant Ape Power. And because his active skill is calculated separately, when you pop it, it actually gives him a total boost of attack and defense plus 376% if you're using it during the first eight turns, and then if it's after that, then it's gonna be attack and defense plus 320%, which is still not bad at all, right? So uh, that is the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, guys. Uh, he is, as I've said many times, man, he's a beast. He really is. He's easily one of the best TURs in the game right now. I would put him in the top five for sure, maybe even top three, somewhere in that range. I mean, he gets such a huge boost on his passive. The attacks effective against all types, the high chance to evade and counter. This active skill is very good as well. He has good links. He's in some very good categories. Um, what else is there to say, man? I mean, keep in mind, I am a huge Gogeta fanboy, so that might be skewing my perception a little bit, but I think most people can agree that this dude is just awesome. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, that's everything you gotta know about Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. And we're gonna quickly talk about the side unit as well, the Nova Shenron. His leader skill is Shadow Dragon Saga, category key plus 4. HP attack and defense plus 120%. Super attack raises attack for 3 turns and causes supreme damage and seals super attack. His passive is attack and defense plus 140% plus an additional attack and defense plus 40% and high chance of performing a critical hit when attacking extreme class enemies. Key plus 2 plus an additional attack and defense plus 40% when there is a Shadow Dragon Saga category enemy. And then Shadow Dragon Saga category super class allies defense plus 40%. His links are Gentleman, Cold Judgment, Shocking Speed, GT, Shadow Dragons, Revival, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Shadow Dragon Saga, Resurrected Warriors, and Worthy Rivals. So at his best, Nova Shenron can be pretty amazing depending on who you're fighting, right? I mean, I've never been a huge fan of these like situational buffs. So I mean, if you're fighting an extreme class Shadow Dragon Saga category enemy, then he's getting a massive, massive boost on his passive. But if you're not, if you're fighting a super class ally, or sorry, a super class enemy, then he's not gonna be nearly as impressive, right? But I do like the fact that he also has a little bit of support, and as long as you're fighting extreme enemies, then he's getting at least attack plus 180% and defense plus 220%, including this uh, support, right? So um, I would say, yeah, a very good you know, non Dokkan Fest unit, but nothing too crazy. And that's pretty much gonna do it for today's video, guys. I've given you all the information you need to hopefully decide whether or not Gogeta is worth your stones. I mean, if we're talking about just Gogeta himself in a vacuum, then yes, he's definitely, definitely worth it. But you gotta consider all the other factors, right? Like his banner, the side unit, his categories, his super attack animations, maybe you're not a fan of those, and if that's the case, then you might not want to go as hard for him, right? So yeah, take all those factors into consideration, and the fact that the 6th anniversary is coming in July, and we're getting LR Master of Ultra Instinct Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. I mean, I know it's still further down the line, it's still, you know, at least 6 months away, but you might want to start thinking about saving now, right? Because you can never have enough stones for banners like that. Four Dokkan Festival LRs per banner, as well as a bunch of other top tier units, I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. So, yeah, this banner is a bit of a tough call, I gotta say, because Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is amazing. The banner overall is not crazy. So I would say if you don't want Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta that bad, then this one is a fairly easy pass or skip. Um, if you do want Gogeta though, I still wouldn't recommend anybody to go too crazy. I think the most you should do is like four to six multis, 200 to 300 stones, regardless of what you get, just call it a day. If you get shafted, that's just how it goes. Accept the L and move on, because this is not one of those banners that you wanna be spending all of your stones on. That's for sure. Okay, so that's my recommendation, but of course, the choice is ultimately up to you. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys plan to summon for Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, and if so, how many stones are you gonna spend? And uh, that's it, guys. Another quick reminder, we will be streaming tonight when the banner drops, so if you guys are gonna be free, you're gonna be awake, then try your best to tune in. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it, I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.